first it was the national anthem to be sung in movie halls that was ordered by the Supreme Court. And now the Madras High Court today has said that singing the Vande Matram is going to be compulsory in all government schools, colleges and university in Tamil Nadu at least once a week. They say it's for the larger public interest and to instill a sense of patriotism in each and every citizen of the state. The court also directed that Vande Matram should be played and sung in all government offices as well as private companies, factories and industries at least once a month. After the national anthem in movie halls, now schools and colleges in Tamil Nadu will have to play the national song Vande Matram once a week on Mondays or Fridays. The Madras High Court has also ordered government and private offices, even factories, to play the song once a month, but said those who have a difficulty can't be compelled if they have valid reasons. The court has also asked the state government to upload English and Tamil translations of the song. I think when we sing this uh, once in a week, it'll, it'll get recognition at par with our national anthem. The lyrics itself gives us, you know, goosebumps. This would uh, take a great step forward towards bringing us all together. But some see this as another form of forced nationalism, which could turn counterproductive. When it's forced upon us, we tend to uh, think of it in a different way. We, we, we think not to do it. Like, why should we do it? Is it a case of judicial overreach? This was not the petitioner's prayer in the first place. The case is all about in which language was Vande Madram composed originally. Beyond the practical difficulties, will this stand legal scrutiny? In Chennai, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. Well, the question is whether people uh, should be forced or ordered to sing Vande Matram or even the national anthem for that matter because that is the controversy that was raked up when the Supreme Court ordered that uh, to take place in movie halls. Well, joining us in this segment this evening, we have Ashutosh joining us tonight from Delhi. Also, Professor Devraj Mukherjee uh, from Delhi University is here with us uh, and uh, Janvi Oja of the ABVP also joins us. Well, I really wanted to understand uh, a younger person's perspective uh, on, on uh, all of this. But uh, let me ask Professor Mukherjee. It's interesting that we're having this debate for the second time in two days. Yesterday it was about the tank in JNU <laughs> and today it is about the Madras High Court order. What do you think of it? Uh, <coughs> it's, uh, I mean, you've seen innumerable uh, action movies <laughs> where uh, people are taken hostage and then they're asked to read uh, a text that the the, the terrorists want them to read and they are forced to read that text because they don't have an option they have a gun pointed to their head do they mean what they say when they are forced to say what they are forced to say they do not so anything that you are forced to say with somebody holding a gun to your head is meaningless and nationalism I think is I think uh, to those who value it uh, is, is sacred and to those who also have a tenuous relationship with nas nationalism for them also, it's a special feeling. I mean, we all experience moments of nationalism in, in small things like a victory in a cricket match or an Indian scaling Mount Everest or some scientist coming up with, a, uh, with, with an invention or a discovery that, that makes a But that difference comes from within on its own. Exactly my point. <coughs> so it's not that we are immune to the, to the draw of nationalistic feelings. We all are. But when it's collectivized, and when it's seen to be aggressively enforced, and, 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 and in this instance, when it's made compulsory, I think it actually takes away from what nationalism really should be. Instead of adding to the idea of nationalism, I think enforcing nationalism takes something away from it. So Janvi, as a, as, as a young student yourself, what do you think? I mean, uh, I wouldn't necessarily compare Vande Matram to uh, a letter being read out when you're being held hostage. But I understand the principle of what Professor Mukherjee is trying to say, that this is something that we should want to do on our own. Why mm -hmm. do you think that we're seeing this increasing trend where you have authorities, institutions, and even courts talking about instilling patriotism among people? I think um, this uh, Vande Matram uh, is uh, a national song. And how many of us are aware of it from uh, the first para after that? How many of us remember that? I'm sure uh, it is like 10 to 15 percent of the population who remembers the whole Vande Matram song and it is the national song. It is a national song and we must respect the song. Another thing, the verdict also says that those who cannot sing it for some genuine reason, he or she must not be compelled to sing it. 
this is also Except in the same. I'm trying to wonder how that genuine or valid reason, as the court has said, how that will be determined. Yeah, that, that is, is that is a different issue. What is the valid reason? How is this, this going to be defined? What is the valid uh, term uh, here? But uh, the point is, Vande Matram is not something which originated in last three years or in last few decades or from 1947 or 1857. No, it is far more behind that, and it is a song which is for uh, the uh, singing and remembering glory of the sung and the unsung heroes. who worked tirelessly for the country so when you say the word vande matram it is not only about one ideology one kind of uh, generation one time of this country it is the story of the whole unsung generation of this country so it is very important to know your own culture from where you originated and i totally so in school it is it is a very normal thing to sing uh, uh, prayers in the morning so if you are going to sing one prayer In, in the whole six prayers in one is one day matram. I think it's it's okay. It's fine. But General Hasan, let me get you in on this. It's one thing to have a school assembly which sing, uh, you know, ha uh, says prayers of you know various religions. <coughs> We did that in school as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you read out an ex excerpt yeah. from somewhere else. But here you have a court ruling, and I, I don't know why the Madras High Court. And forgive me, I, I ask for forgiveness before I'm sent <laughs> to <laughs> jail for contempt. I don't know why uh, the court has said m Mondays and Fridays are preferable to do this, but. Yeah. You know now. You know they're talking about having Vande Matram sung in private institutions, industries, factories. You know, apart from schools and colleges. So, what do you make of this order? Firstly, uh, Nidhi, I think I'm the wrong uh, representative from the minority community, so to say, because I am actually representing. You're not here an, because of that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm actually representing a, an opinion of a, a different segment of society, which is soldiers. Actually, yeah, that's why you're here. and soldiers perhaps recommend pro probably represent the finest of patriotism and the finest of plurality you see both of them together for me personally if the government or a court of law asks me to sing a national song i will not look beyond the meaning of the song i will just sing it because symbolically for me it is a gesture of patriotism that's the manner that's the way we always treat things in the army usually and the armies Way of ways of representing patriotism are generally idolized everywhere in the country. But having said that, let me also say that for any normal human being, I think there are four values, four issues which really are very dear to him. Number one is the nation. Number two is his faith. Number three are his parents, and number four is his job. Four issues with which uh, he makes compromises all the time in his life. can he make compromises with patriotism can he make compromises with faith is a is a moot point now a muslim may just object and say that um, my faith does the his interpretation is my faith does not permit yeah. it now how do you therefore force him to play it how do you force him to sing it he's going to create a bit of a problem in a democracy as professor mukherjee said very correctly actually there should be a diversity of opinion and the freedom should be there which the madras high court has also given up to a point depending on the interpretation Uh, of of that freedom but having said that i think at the end of the day what we need to do for these kind of things is to prepare people which means over a period of time the concept of our patriotism should so infuse into the people that it should take the priority over faith over job over parentage everything but how do you i know it's very idealistic i know it's very but idealistic i i i have a i have a question and let yeah. me ask ashutosh that question and and praveen ashutosh let me ask you how do you define patriotism i mean uh, or or how to display your patriotism or show your patriotism i it's it's love for your country but how we choose to express that love i think professor mukherjee was trying to make that point may mean different things to different people and and how they choose to want to do it ashutosh Uh, see, Nidhi, it, it's very simple. Nobody can define whether I'm patriot or not. Nobody can force me that if I sing Vande Matram, only then I will be patriotic or nationalist. If I do not, I will not be nationalist or the patriotic. It, it's a very, it's very, uh, very different scenario today. Since you are asking me, who will define who is a patriot and who is not a patriot, who is a nationalist, who is not nationalist? I'll take back you in the history. When the 1942, the Quit India Movement was was going on. the rss did not participate and even their chief the second chief mr m s golwalkar he said that 1942 had taught students and youth not to follow law the similar argument he has about the 1920 21 uh, movement with the gandhi was leading so he called that 
freedom struggle as a superficial nationalism will you call rss or the followers of the rss anti national or somebody who is not patriot if you go by these definitions then 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 the situation will be very very different my argument is very simple that whether i sing vande matram or do not sing vande matram that does not uh, define whether i am a nationalist or not or or whether i respect vande matram or i respect tiranga or not the similar argument again uh, follows with about about the about the tricolor in 1947 when the tricolor was uh, was was there then rss was the organization and the organizer which is the which is the, which is the mukhpatra of, of rss had come out and said hindus will not accept tricolor because the word 3 word 3 is bad woman you are saying the hindus definition of accept. nationalism RSS has did changed did not unfold uh, tricolor on their headquarter in 2002 So no, will you call I understand RSS the point anti- you're making. Patriotic, anti national. Just give me a second. I, 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 let me ask <coughs> Praveen that question. I think Praveen, the question that that is asked today is that uh, we're constantly being asked to prove our patriotism all the time in these times. And uh, who gets, you know, who gets to turn around and say, if, if, I mean, do I have a right to turn around and say, you know, Praveen, you're a patriot or you're not? I mean, why, why should I be giving you a certificate or you be giving me one? You know, I, I think Nidhi, this the Madras High Court just hasn't done enough. I mean, until we all wear the tricolor on our shirts, going into office every day, uh, you know, carry an umbrella with the Ashok Chakra, and our children are pulled out at lunchtime to feed cows, we are not going to be a great nation. I mean, I really believe that. Uh, there's an insecurity about us as a nation, which is just gone bananas. We are so fearful about ourselves that I think we need to step back and ask ourselves some questions. What makes us Indian? What makes us Indian? There are six six of us sitting here. We are all from different parts of the country. We speak different languages at home. Ms. Oja and I and you and Ashutosh, uh, General Hasnain. we we have very little in common but the one thing that makes us indian is our constitution and our laws and our respect for them right i find it amazing that we sit around discussing all this stuff about oh our national spirit and respect our parents and respect this and respect that and then we get out of all these nice nationalist things you go out on the road outside and count up how many patriotic indians can be bothered stopping at a traffic light or paying their taxes on time or even being bothered about the fact that two out of three of our children our children our indian children are going to bed tonight without a meal in their stomach and then you have a sense of what our national self worth and self respect is actually about i would like to see a nationalism that comes with respect for our law and compassion for our fellow citizens not out of flying the flag and all this drama you had this debate a little while back about cinema theaters and playing the national anthem there great you know play the national anthem in fact you know hey let's play 24 hours a day at every chowk in the country but since we started playing the national anthem have you noticed any indians becoming more law abiding at traffic lights have the rates of assaults and crime against women come down on our streets have more indians started well paying said, their taxes i, I, I think that's very well not. said uh, so so, so uh, there's so many different points you raised so janvi i i i know you wanted to come in first on that isn't that a, isn't that actually a good strong point that praveen made okay uh, first thing i'll start with uh, ashutosh ji he said uh, this is not needed and rss <coughs> and this that okay ashutosh ji one thing i'll li- like to uh, inform you maybe uh, the same left which uh, arvind kejriwal ji came and supported on 9 february it uh, stamped over on the na- indian national flag on 2000 in 2013 the same left arvind kejriwal ji supported on 9 february and it was a symbol it was just a symbol now will you say that it was okay to do it because it was just a symbol it was not a country they were stomping on no symbols do matter national anthem national songs do matter it is shameful that we do not remember the whole song and it is not mandatory but yes we must know that second point uh, which uh, praveen ji said that how is uh, the um, crime rate decreasing or not no he is making he is making a bigger point yeah. that crime rates do are decreasing know? or not no no Would no, we be better that. Indians 
if we just huh. were be, uh, better human beings, if we followed yeah, the rule exactly, of law, exactly. if we cared about our, yes. our fellow citizens, and is that what we should be focusing on rather than just these symbols? I mean, I don't think so that you can go on... Uh, I will just give a simple example that you cannot say that rural development is, if it is being done, urban development must be stopped. Both go side by side, both go uh, parallelly. So be saying that uh, one thing must be done, another must be stopped, these things must go parallel. Nationalism is not imposition, it is celebration. Indian nationalism is not German nationalism. It is not like that, that it is going to kill people if they are not going to follow. Indian nationalism is cultural nationalism. It doesn't it talk about boundaries. It may beat them up because somebody was beaten up yeah. in the movie theatre. Yeah. Yeah. That for happens, that happens and that is highly condemnable. But the point is... But this why does it have to be enforced? Uh, let no, me ask this you... This is as simply as not being enforced. This is celebration of nationalism. Whenever... Like, it is holy celebration. Are like, we, it is are Eid so celebration. Are we so insecure as a country that yeah. we need to be told that you national anthem gana hai is time, is waqt. Uh, that you know, you have to know Vande Matram every single word and you have to sing it every but Monday, Friday. Hum, I don't know. We have to sing prayers. We have to sing prayers. But bhi compulsory? Hum, compulsory? We have to sing Christmas ke jingles. Bhi hai. To compulsory? To compulsory? Hai na? Uh, court has said it is not compulsory. If for valid reasons you are not what able is the to valid explain. reason? I mean, how valid would you reasons. Get, I, I am curious to know how the court would implement this. I, yeah. I mean, Professor Mukherjee, yeah. uh, uh, Praveen made that other important point, which I was trying to make as well. I mean, does this reflect our own insecurities as a country? Of course it we does. We have to keep reminding ourselves that, you know, we are Indian does. and we, we love our armed forces. The JNU Absolutely. tank also came Absolutely. up yesterday, which I want to ask General Hasnain about. Yeah. But you think it does reflect that? Yeah. The second thing is, I mean, the first to answer your question, but before I answer your question, I just want to sort of step aside a little and, and mention something else. See, uh, for example, General uh, is from, an ar from the army and we all respect <laughs> the army. But uh, uh, it's, it's a little rich to then sort of use the army uh, to, to sort of foist nationalism uh, as, uh, as, as a narrative, say, in the public sphere. Meaning, if you, uh, unless you are gung-ho on the army, uh, and in India now we have, in, the, in, the, in America you have the military industrial complex, in India you have the military media complex. So if one contrary word is spoken against the army, you are seen to be anti-national. So this is a kind of an appropriation that is very dangerous. And, and you feel that it actually politicizes the and, army. And exactly. And what, is, I'm also try, what I'm also worried by, and this is to add to what Praveen just said, is that when nationalism becomes a political project, when the act of mobilizing nationalist sentiments adds to a political agenda, then it's not neutral in the sense that it's not neutral of what the state wants or what the government wants. So are these attempts at foisting nationalism independent of a political agenda? Are they just for the good of Bharat? Or are they part of a larger narrative that seeks to mobilize people, mobilize opinion yeah. in the name of nationalism, and I, which supports yeah. a particular ag political agenda? That's and what I, I'm And what you said on the army in particular, I wanted General Hasnain to, you know, to talk about that. I mean, he's right because any time anybody raises any criticism of the army now or asks a question. Just ask question, not criticize. You're not even criticize, yeah. Just ask a question. We, you know, you're immediately labeled an anti-national traitor, asked to go to Pakistan, now China. But, <laughs> uh, you know, is, is there something wrong when, when the narrative has become about that and the army, in a sense, is used as an institution in that way to, to further a, a certain sort of cause? I, of I've been questioned on this many times, right? But before, before answering yeah. that specifically, uh, let me just uh, respond very briefly to what uh, Praveen has said. And Praveen is one person, uh, when he writes, and if I have not read it, I don't feel uncomfortable, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. Because you have to read what Praveen Swami writes, right? His opinions are the finest opinions in, in the media anywhere. But I must tell him only this, that you see, everything is not a question of a single uh, line. It's not a single rail which is going along. You have multiple dimensions of nationalism. You have multiple dimensions of national development. This is just one of the symbolic things. I'm not supporting the Madras High Court judgment in any way. What I'm just saying is that there will be a lot to do with symbolism. And symbolism is one of the elements which contributes to the betterment of society. So I don't think we should just do away with it and, you know, sort of uh, trivialize it completely. But coming back to your question, larger question on the army and the criticism on the army. You see a lot of it in the media. Your deductions which you all are drawing, everyone, is basically what you're seeing in the electronic media every evening. There are many of us in the army who perhaps don't, be, don't agree with this, right? You don't and our it. opinion is not necessarily always heard, hmm. right? Uh, I'm for all for a democratic voice in the army. 
in the army there are always different opinions but when the task is finally there you will go along with the task you will never question it but till the task is not defined till the time the discussion is on there will be different opinions and that is a thing which i have always honored i have always followed and that is something which i will always support the issue of the tank in jnu i wish you had got me for that discussion i was probably not here that day but uh, let it me was say, just yesterday uh, let me say that uh, uh, it's it's a choice of the of the of the university i i would have put it down to a choice of the university i would say let there be a opinion poll if but people tank, feel i mean i said, feel that I they said need this yesterday tank. also if you want to commemorate or uh, you know uh, pay tribute to those who have passed out and and have served the armed forces why not do it through let's say a wall a, a memorial with their names or uh, do, donate actually, a, li a have a library a very, in their names or i something. do agree a tank is a very large symbol yeah it's a very it's aggressive the, it militaristic it is the most easily available symbol actually if you ask me the army loves to get it because the tank is easily available in the armed forces vehicle depot here in delhi they can just pull it out from there put it there a lot of people have suggested why don't we have a symbol of a rifle a reverse rifle and a and a helmet on top of that something like the unknown soldier yeah. there are all kinds of symbols so it, the issue is that perhaps jnu does need a reminder the intellectual content of society in india why, does why need does a reminder they, that it, you have a soldier on the on the why does jnu need a reminder no the jnu is also an element of uh, uh, it's a very important institution in india yeah so why i would but say all, all universities all, all nda degrees are given all by jnu all universities require so why do degrees are given from jnu yeah itself. so so then why do they need a reminder that the soldiers are fighting on Actually, the front those thing, uh, the nda is so far displaced from jnu that that linkage somehow never becomes very evident to the students of jnu well uh, you know but then that's you're generalizing about jnu which is which is Maybe. something I, i i raised yesterday as well and that's a separate debate but ashutosh there is an important point that general hasnain and janvi both raised that symbolism is important and you know it, it, it is so do we do uh, symbols do matter and 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 what would you say to that to that argument uh see nidhi it's a it's a very funny argument in the sense because today the vice chancellor of jawala nehru university is saying that if the tanks is is stationed in jnu then the then the students will be inspired and probably they will be nationalists does he want to say that the jnu is and the national are not patriotic we are already no nationalists as to we are do, already see, so the whole what uh, ha right. so I, it's I, a it's, yeah. it's a funny argument in that sense the kind of the kind of narrative which has been built by certain television channels in india day in and day out are they doing any service to the nationalism or they are they are creating an ambiance which is going to be very very dangerous for the country as a whole is somebody having an opinion on the pakistan indo pak relationship or uh, or have a different had a different argument on the kashmir or somebody has a different argument on the indo indo chinese relationship and does it mean that these people who have a different opinion in the different argument yeah. does it mean they are exactly. not nationalist yeah. so what kind of argument we are trying to build I that think, is why i am saying that those point. who had no role to play in indian freedom struggle in 19 no i'm not even going that far i'm not are, even going that far there are a lot of people yeah, I, there are a whole lot of organization that never no, been I think, to i think the to problem is the national, that national anybody national movement, yeah and i mean jnu no, no, participate no, no. in this i am out of time all them anti nationalists today absolutely i think the label anti national is something that that is very quickly thrown at people uh, and uh, and that is extremely unfortunate but i think we all need to so uh, you know uh, uh, perhaps introspect a little about why uh, we need to be sort of reminded of our patriotism every single day thank you very much to all of you for joining us